David Boren, uh, President of the University of Oklahoma, thanks for being with us today to talk a little bit about this new initiative petition drive, uh, a penny sales tax to fund education. Right. There's lots of um, plans out there this year for education. Can you tell us why you think this one's the best? Well, it's the only one that's comprehensive. You know, in other words, you can say, all right, we need to do something about teacher salaries. Well, we definitely do. That's a top priority. We're losing good, bright teachers to other states that are not staying here. We have 35,000 of our children in classrooms without properly trained teachers because of the teacher shortage. But then there are also this great, there are great needs in early childhood development. We know that. We've seen the statistics on teen pregnancies or health problems or other things where children are coming just unprepared to go into the educational system. They need help. Every day I see college students who are trying to work an extra job to pay for tuition and fee increases. Their families are stretched out. They don't know how they're going to continue to go on to college. And then, you know, uh, this newspaper had a whole series on uh, jobs that are waiting for skilled people, 85,000 jobs. Uh, I remember, according to the Oklahoman and the State Commerce Department, that have not been filled because we don't have the people with the skills to fill these jobs. So all around us, there are problems. So I don't think you can just say, and we need the entrepreneurship, we need the research for business growth and job growth in the state that come from our university systems. So all across, whether we're talking about career tech, whether we're talking about teacher salaries, early childhood, all across the board, there are needs for education in Oklahoma. And we've gotten in ourselves in such a deep hole. Here we are, 49th in the nation in what we spend to educate children. First in the nation in cuts to education since 2008. We're already in the deep hole. And this year, before the legislature even starts to figure out how to close this $1.3 billion gap, we have another $100 million cut off of education because our estimates of last year's revenues are falling short. So uh, the, the current budget year we're in. So we're going to start with $100 million down before we even start to try to dig ourselves out of this deep hole of being virtually last in the nation. So this would be an annual, ongoing... It'd be uh, recurring. That's, you know, that's one of the problems if you pass one-time money, all right, next year, how are you going to pay the yeah. teachers? Next year, how are you going to take care of the students? So uh, it's recurring. It's a recurring one penny. I like to say our children are worth a penny. And it's, it's a penny sales tax statewide. And uh, it would give us what we really need, enough money to make a real difference in what we're doing with education in Oklahoma. Of course, there are a lot of other reforms, a lot of other changes that can only be made of the legislature. We had a Supreme Court test even of whether or not we were covering one subject right. uh, because it's all educational funding. But if we got into educational organization or other questions, it was obviously we couldn't do that in this question. So there's still a lot to be done at the state capitol along with what we're trying to do in terms of finding a funding source. Well, uh, some of the cities have said they're not in favor of this because that should be their funding. That is their main funding source and that concerns them. Well, I'm really sympathetic to that because I think that the, the cities and towns need to have more home rule uh, ability. They need to have more ability to say if the people of their community, let's say the people of Oklahoma City or the people of Edmond or whatever town we're talking about, want to like expand the definition of their sales tax to cover services or something else, have other sources of revenue, I think that those communities, if the people want to do that, they want to pay for those services, they want to raise that money, they need a, a broader base. But, but you know, you have to look at the sales tax situation. We came to it kind of as a last resort. If you're going to raise $600 million and there is no free lunch, uh, how do you do it? We poll on the income tax. Mm, okay, not very good. Very big split between Democrats and Republicans, how they felt about it. Property tax, not good at all. Then we polled on the sales tax, 65% yes, not even a 1% difference between Democrats and Republicans. So that words, was pretty was clear to you, that was the way to go. Well, you know, in politics, it's, it's what's possible rather than what might be abstractly popular, but when you get down to it, what has a chance of passage? So sales tax is not ideal. I do think we have to work with the cities and towns to get their revenue base broadened, and I really want to do that. I've said I think the education people should help them do that. And, uh, and, and we should, but it's, it's really, I think, it seems to be the way Oklahomans want to, want to pay their taxes. Uh, we're 40th in the nation when you consider all tax burden, of all taxes in Oklahoma. We're 40th, we're not up at the top. But 
a sales tax were higher, but 40th in the nation and overall burden roughly. And that's because we have a lower income tax in many states. Some states like the income tax. Some states, Texas loves the property tax. They really mm -hmm. put it to you on the property tax. But um, so Oklahomans seem to have decided that their their favorite way of paying for things is sales tax, and so that's part of the reasons we're we're trying well, to do this. Well, and Oklahomans will vote on this if your uh, drive is successful. You get the yes. the signatures that you need. It'll right. go on the November. It would go on the November ballot, and you know what we thought about that? We thought this is so important to the future of the state that it ought to be on the ballot. Let the people decide it and put it on the ballot when the most voters will be voting. And that's always in the presidential election. So what we're saying with this petition drive, and we just have 90 days to get about 125,000 signatures, uh, let's let the people vote on this. And you know, the way, the, the way that we have in state law right now, it's very hard for the legislature to even be able to find a new source of revenue. So uh, they have to have super majorities to find new sources of revenue. But I think the people here are, are ready to act. They don't want us to be last in, in funding education. They don't want us to have the biggest cuts in education. And like I, I said earlier today, as we were kicking off our petition drive to get signatures for these petitions, I think what it, it's, it's disastrous from the point of view of economic development and job growth. You know, are we gonna put billboards up? We're gonna buy ads on national television to say, come to Oklahoma, bring your business, grow your business in Oklahoma, bring your family, because we're last in education. Well, first of all, they want educated workforce. Uh, they want their children to be able to have good schools to go to. They're like all the rest of us. And so, and, and, and higher education needs to have research and find new products and develop new ways. It's a big part. I just saw an ad about New York. Come to New York. We have a great partnership with our universities. We're building new businesses. We have entrepreneurship and the rest of it. So that's where they want to go. So I think, you know, I, Oklahoma, you know, is, I feel very fortunate. I've had a, I've had a wonderful life. And uh, Oklahoma let me be governor and senator, and now they let me be president of the University of Oklahoma. And job. I, I dearly love to work with our young people. I owe it so much. And so I sort of kept watching what was happening, mainly what was not happening, and seeing our state sink further and further. And, seeing us not meet our obligations to our children. I mean, our children deserve the tools to succeed like we've been given the tools. Well, speaking of uh, university, what, what is this specifically going to do? Uh, for the university system? For the university system. Well, as because you know, we talked more about paying right, teachers right. and so well, forth. Well, uh, and of course the biggest <laughs> chunk of the money, about 70%, goes into common schools. But, uh, and that's, that's very much needed. But it does provide a $100 million increase for the higher education system. And for example, uh, at OU, that means about $25 million a year. Every year it's recurring. So it makes us, it makes it a lot easier for us to maintain our standards of excellence. I'm trying to get early retirements, other things, not filling vacancies on the faculty to try to save money right now. We've cut our own salaries, administrators at OU. But you know, I don't want to have to raise tuition again. I feel so sorry for our students because the state is not funding, and uh, the state share of what we pay to educate someone, say at OU or OSU, has fallen from well over 50% now down to 16%, medical school 6%. Where do you make up the difference? It's the students and their families, tuition, fees, they keep increasing. It's harder for these kids to go to school. And I really worry, I think, what if we're keeping kids from going to school that should go on to college? And think of the talent we're wasting in some cases. So. I just see it in their faces. I see the stress, and, and I feel really strongly about that as well. Well, I appreciate you coming in to talk to us today about oh, this. Thank you. And uh, we'll, well see we'll, you in 90 days where we'll we are. We'll be out there. I'm going to be, I think, in 18 towns in the next few days, along with the rest of my day job. I'll be sort of getting up early in the morning to teach after I've been at Ponca City or Durant or wherever I've been. And uh, But uh, it's, it's an exciting time for Oklahoma, and it's I think an opportunity, you know, people sometimes say, what can we do? Well, this is a chance for the people themselves to do something. So I'm really passionate about it, as you can tell. All right. David Bourne will be back on the campaign trail. <laughs> <laughs>